Hi guys, it's Will here from 8packing.com where we turbocharge your brain, strengthen your body, improve your sleep and reduce your stress to help you work at your very best. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the salt myth and how it might kill you. So this is something that some biohackers will know about, but most of the, the general public and just your friends and family won't understand and they will argue with you about it at first. Um, so... It's one of those. Please feel free to share this video around, um, like it on Facebook, you know, share it with your, your parents who are scared of salt because hopefully this should scare some sense into them. So eat more salt is going to be the message at the end of this. But unless you're a keen biohacker, it's very likely that everything you know about salt is wrong. And that's quite a presumptuous um, start to the presentation. But it's true when we've been spoon fed. Uh, I mean, I'm based over in the UK and it's the American government that have done a lot of these studies or funded a lot of them. Um, and that trickles down to the rest of the world, essentially. So let's take a quick look at the studies. Um, the claims of most of the study is that salt is some kind of poison, salt is not healthy, and the big one is salt causes high blood pressure. I mean, salt is a poison, salt is put into all processed crap junk food so we can write that one off salt being not healthy um, we'll come on to and salt causing high blood pressure is the main concern that i have with the studies and with the general information that's out there it's simply not true so the original study that sparked all this off it was an absolute shambles of a study and should not have even um well the conclusions should not have been put across the the study itself was carried out on rats, not humans. Um, they used salt sensitive rats in particular, which is obviously going to skew the results. And the rats ate a human mass equivalent of 500 grams of salt. So what does that mean? That means if you scale up the mass of a rat into a person, so you've got the same ratio of salt that they'd be taking, they'd be looking at about 500 grams of salt per day per uh, per person if this was done in a human trial which obviously is massively screwed to what uh, an average person would eat so that was a whole pile of junk the intersalt study in 1984 cost 1.3 million of um of the tax the taxpayers dollars even if you can get that word out so this is a uh, more of what you'd expect from something that's going to come out with a claim um that's quite as dramatic as average blood pressure goes up if you eat more salt, which is what they found. 10,000 subjects across 52 global locations. What they did, they averaged out the data, um, which obviously then doesn't take into account other things, such as just general diet, because obviously it was spread around the world. And there was a lot of um, issues with, with that data when you dive into it, because it doesn't quite summarize as nicely as what that sentence does. They actually found... If you look at, if you take the skewed data and the data either side of the norm out of the picture, blood pressure drops if you eat more salt. So two specifics. Chicago was the lowest salt intake area um, that they studied and they actually had the highest blood pressure. So obviously that screams out to me, Chicago, big city, lots going on. So you're going to have a high blood pressure there. So salt isn't the be all and end all of this. And then a province in China actually had the highest salt intake and actually had n almost zero blood pressure. Again, so that's taken into account a whole bunch of other lifestyle and food issues that the study summarized and just seemed to dismiss. Next, the, the next main study was 21,000 people in 1971. They found, and when I first read this, I was like, damn, you know, <laughs> I've got it wrong. But they found 32% of people with high salt intake had more strokes, or people with salt high in salt, salt intake had more strokes. 44% more heart attacks, and people with high salt intake, or sodium intake rather, had an 89% chance of earlier death. And this was the last big study to have been done on salt and sodium. And this is what everyone quotes when they say salt and sodium is bad for you. However, it was only in obese patients that they found these numbers and this coloration. With normal people, there was zero, and just 
go over that again. For most people, there is zero link between sodium and any one of the risks I just mentioned. So that is uh, quite dumbfounding, really, that people have just taken this totally out of context. There is a whole bunch more studies that I've gone into a bit more depth and summarized on the actual page that goes along with inside this video. So if you're on YouTube, you can click the link below in the description box. If you're on 8packing.com, just uh, scroll down and you'll see the summaries there. Um, there's a whole bunch more of them and they're all basically saying either inconclusive or absolutely just nonsense that salt causes uh, high blood pressure. So what happens if you take all this to heart, you're eating a really healthy diet and you massively reduce your salt intake? Well, you can get increased levels of renin which indirectly leads to increase in blood pressure and a 2% increase in renin actually leads to a 25% increase in heart attacks. Renin is uh, a biomarker that's becoming more and more important as we learn more and more about it. So it's one to look out for in the future. It also raises insulin resistance, causes cognitive issues because essentially you can become dehydrated. You need sodium, uh, a certain amount of it to get um, other nutrients in and out of your cells and finally it can cause anorexia in elderly patients everyone has known what it's been what it be everyone knows what it's been like to uh being dehydrated at some point in their life you know you s stayed out in the sun too much long playing or you've been playing sports that is essentially what happens when you have low salt levels so do i just eat more of this table salt no <laughs> Uh, quite unequivocally, no. So table salt is 98% sodium. Natural salt, such as pink Himalayan salt, is 84% sodium. So it's not just important that the percentage of sodium and the ratio of everything else in there. It's also important what's actually in that other percentage. So if you look at table salt, the remaining 2% is chemicals left over from the refining process, and these are not great for you. If you look at natural salt, such as uh, Himalayan salt, you're looking at 84% um, useful trace minerals. So they're not going to, you know, that may not, might, might not be night and day to you. But first off, the pink Himalayan salt tastes a million times better than table salt. It doesn't have that nasty, dry, horrible, cheap taste. It's what gourmet chefs use. No one uses table salt in a kitchen. So I started with this slide, I'm going to end with it. That's what pink Himalayan salt looks like. And the conclusion is, don't sweat eating salt if you're eating a decent diet of fresh fruit, fresh, amazing organic veg and meat. If you're eating a crappy diet full of processed nonsense and rubbish, then, you know, you don't need me to tell you that that's what's unhealthy. It's, there's too much salt in there already. It's not the best type of salt. And you need to cut that out before you start faffing around with I don't eat salt because of this or I do add salt because of it. That is where your issue lies. So hopefully you found some value in this video. If you did, please click the like button. If you want to see more videos of this type, please click subscribe. If you've got any uh, issues, if you don't agree with me, please leave a comment either on YouTube or on the 8packing.com blog. I reply to every comment. And uh, yeah, let's get some discussion going on this. Cheers, guys.